Good evening everyone. Today's topic is the hyena and in, in, in particular the spotted hyena, the spotted hyena. Crocota crocota, crocota crocota. So basically the spotted hyena, the African spotted hyena is an animal that lives in Africa. Well, let's go deeper more into this animal's behavior, into its way of life, and first start of defining, with defining it as an animal. So the spotted hyena is one of the real hyenas, meaning it is part of the species of animals hyena day, and basically hyena day is a an animal subspecies that has within it the following animals. First, the crocota crocota, crocota crocota, the spotted hyena, spotted hyena. Second is crocota crocota spilaya, which is crocota crocota spilaya, the cave Eurasian cave hyena. And the third is the brown hyena. And the third is the striped hyena. The five, the fifth is the, uh, if I remember, the of the art wolf, which is although smaller. It is also considered as a hyena. So this is basically the family of the species of the hyenas. Now let's define what is the spotted hyena. The spotted hyena is an animal that is found in Africa mainly these days, but it used to exist as the uh, Eurasian cave cave hyena. And why is that? Because long ago in the grasslands of Europe, animals like cave lions and spotted hyenas, cave spotted hyenas used to roam all around the Eurasian, let's say, uh, valleys, grasslands, and areas, and frontier. And if we look at the spotted hyena today, it is still in existence, thankfully, and it roams the African continent from the north to the south, from the east to the west. But basically, if we look to the range of the forests in the middle of Africa, is is basically when we look at that range, the spotted hyena is not generally found within dense jungles at times, despite and unlike its cousin, the striped hyena, which is found in Asia and in India and in uh, parts of the Middle East, and if we rec recognize that these animals are basically from the same species. They are actually different. And why we are speaking of the differences now is to raise the fact that the spotted hyena is the most carnivorous of all of the hyenas. So within the family of the hyenas, the striped hyena, the brown hyena, are considered as real scavengers and in some cases hunters. But the reality is that these animals are known also to eat a little bit of an omnivoran, if I may say, an omnivoran diet, which may include some a few uh, plant matters. So the reality of it is that the spotted hyena is the most carnivorous of all the hyenas. And if we look deeply into the spotted hyena's cavity uh, and the body itself, we realize that this animal is very adapted to it, the nature of it being a carnivore. For example, if the spotted hyena goes through the savannas and realizes that it has an opportunity to scavenge, Although it's a real predator, meaning it's a real hunter, just like the lions, just like the tigers, it will take that opportunity. But what is really fascinating about this animal is the, is the ability of its digestive system to crack down and to basically digest bones, calcium-rich bones, very thick bones, even in the dry season. In some parts of Africa, let's say Eastern Africa, because in most of the the African frontier there is the dry and the wet re seasons. So in the dry season, the spotted hyenas are actually observed uh, eating old carcasses. Let's say not exactly carcasses, but the remains of animals, the skeletons themselves. And the incredible ability of this animal 
allows it to basically crack down bones and ingest the marrow inside and the marrow is the deep uh, composition of the own uh, inner part of the bones so that's that's how deep this animal is specializing and it's it's really a carnivore in that its diet is all exclusively meat animal material biological animal material be it uh, a fresh kill be it a carcass be it a skeleton that's the spotted hyena's specialty now if we look deeper into the diet of the spotted hyena we can realize that it also has a huge range of prey items at its disposal which means that it can hunt and acquire the taste of most of the mammals of the African continent and the reality is that the spotted hyena is also very specialized in scavenging that even the oldest and most decayed remains of carcasses are still within its digestive system's capability now if you look deeper into the cavity and into the the enzymes and into the the acidic uh, di digestive uh, chemicals, uh, let's say the digestive uh, chemical uh, uh, parts and elements inside the cavity, inside the cavity of the stomach of this animal, it is proven by scientists and wildlife in experts and biologists alike that these enzymes and uh, elements acidic elements for digestion can basically play a very important role for the spotted hyena like we mentioned before the ability to crack bones so if you have a very rich, rich calcium within the body of this animal then this for example would benefit its offspring in case we have a litter of let's say three cubs four cubs five cubs then the mother would initiate a nursing session and its milk is very rich now I'm not going to move further here within this documentary to directly go to the social structure because that's later on in this documentary we're going to handle that the social structure of this spotted hyena it's a totally a huge uh, let's say topic itself but now focusing on the diet itself these enzymes are proved to digest every part of the carcass except the hooves and the horns of some animals either be it an antelope a zebra a buffalo grand gazelle impala gazelles antelopes of all sorts and sizes wildebeest water buffalo african water buffalo giraffes even dead carcasses of other hyenas and lions all of these are included and we i cannot like really uh, specifically say like mention all of these here but these are some of the range in which the spotted hyena specializes and if we look deeper into the predatory instincts of this animal they are more of uh, bloodthirsty animals if, if you may say but that is not exactly the truth because the reality is that the spotted hyena is an animal that hunts when it needs to basically feed itself or feed its its cubs, its its family, its social structure. Well, the reality is that when we look deeper into this animal's uh, social structure, what we realize is that in media and in films, the films that are making that the, 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 those that are made in Africa, be it a documentary film, a feature film, let's say a cartoon film like the Simba in the 1980s and 1990s all of these uh, basically misrepresent the spotted hyena as the villain when in fact this animal is not exactly a villain not necessarily a villain at all the time so basically this animal is proven by the behaviorists uh, the behavioral scientists wildlife to be a very smart animal and the degree to which its smartness 
reached is that it can basically realize uh, things like you know complex complex let's say tests for example if we have a mirror and this mirror in, in the reflection of the image of the spotted hyena the spotted hyena wouldn't take that as much as a lion would do in a way that a lion or a lioness would react to the image the reflection of its image as a threat as another lion the spotted hyena is a very smart animal and it's proven through so many tests that have been conducted uh, on the past decades for example one of them is uh, kevin richardson and uh, kevin richardson is a lion conservationist a wildlife enthusiast and conservationist from south africa who cares for lions and other big felines including leopards and tigers and jaguars and all of that but he also specializes in conserving in conserving the uh, spotted hyena as well and reintroducing them to the wild and trying to basically work with them as a pack rather than in 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 in, in pairs or in individuals and he's he's a remor he has he has done great remarkable uh works that i really admire him for it uh for i looked at a couple of the documentaries on youtube about his real achievements and i'm really impressed with the guy because all that he has been making is really a testament to the degree of uh, enthusiasm and care he gives and the message that he's basically and the, the purpose that he's basically working for so kevin richardson uh, was one of those who actually uh, worked close hand in hand with the uh, behavioral behavioral uh, scientists uh, and they proved that this animal is basically a smart animal I don't want to go deep into this because in media we have what is known as misrepresentation and in this case uh, it might happen that a whole entire segment of the society is misrepresented in a way because of just few misunderstandings and because of just few agenda and because of just few realities let's say for example if, you, if we had a whole entire country and there are segments of the people who are proved to be in a certain way negative then the media comes and generalizes the idea all over the country and therefore happens what we refer to in media as misrepresentation the same is happening with the hyena population all around the african uh, frontier of the continent they are portrayed as the villains as the enemies of the lions as the enemy of the kings as the enemies of the good guys as, as the killers as the, as the vicious killers as the psychopaths and all of that but really, the point here that I, I'm trying to touch on is a very, very, very broad idea that has been duplicated in a lot of films, feature films, cartoons, documentaries even. But if, if today I look at documentaries like The Bone Crusher, the bone crusher a Crushing Queen, uh, yeah, from National Geographic, which which is to me is a remarkable documentary that portrays the hyena in its uh, truth and in its you know the it basically it basically portrays to us the reality of the spotted hyena, not truly biased, not biased in a, in a way like other uh, you know old films would portray to us. So basically, looking into this animal basically the spotted hyena to me is a very very interesting animal and i don't get tired or you know bored from studying and reading about it watching documentaries about it and all that why because of the reality that this animal is a very smart animal a very expert animal at, at at what it is doing and basically because this animal to me is sort of you know not looked at sort of elusive animal sort of a misrepresented carnivore of the true carnivores um so looking deeper into its diet um rather than uh, social structure right now the diet of the spotted hyena is very very like we said very broad and just to give you an idea of the hunting behavior of these animals they were once, you know, spotted by the wildlife filmmakers in the Masai Mara region. 
and they were stalking. Yes, that's what it hyena specializes sometimes at stalking. Now, why I mentioned that? That is just an example to give you an idea of how complicated the behavior of this animal is, which is an, an indication to the smartness and the complex uh, social behavior of these animals. And in in one, for example, in one scene, the spotted hyena was put it, uh, was shown stalking a, a topi, which is a kind of big antelope. Uh, and in this case, what was really interesting is that this animal was going in a stalking mood towards its prey, and it locks its jaws on it once it's it's closed from it. And the remarkable thing within this situation is that these antelopes were sleeping. Yes, they were sleeping. And the incredible behavior and smartness of this animal is that it can sense and takes opportunity of other animals when they are sleeping or when they are weak and so on. I mean, moving on to the reality of the spotted hyena's behaviors when displayed upon um, hunting, we can realize that the Maasai people in Tanzania and Kenya gave the name the doctor of the savannah to this carnivore. And why is that? It's basically because they realize that this spotted hyena is capable of realizing and, you know, detecting the sick and the weak of the animals of the herds, either be it a zebra, uh, a herd of zebra, or a herd of water buffalo, a herd of uh, wildebeest. Although in the case of the water buffalo, it's not easy for the spotted hyenas to take them down unless they go into uh, taking the opportunity of a sick or weak animal. So they, they realize, the Maasai people realize that this animal is smart enough to detect the sick and the, and the weak and the old and the young and to basically exploit that opportunity into its own uh, by means of its behavior, by means of its uh, hunting behavior, if I may say. And that's really remarkable for this animal that is always misrepresented as smart, as not smart, as dumb, as really not smart enough and as to be honest as stupid bloodthirsty beast with gnashing teeth and claws and that that's really not the sort of you know rationale these days that we would portray as wildlife enthusiasts about these animals because we know the reality of the 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 matter here is at stake when we misrepresent an animal an animal that is uh, you know the most abundant carnivore in the African continent so that 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 is taken into account by us and we wouldn't let it uh, go un unnoticed so basically the spotted hyena lives now now us I've spoken quite enough of its diet and its its cavity I will move on to speak about it its jaws which which is uh, one of the most remarkable, one of the most really uh, unique of all the, the set of jaws in the animal kingdom. Uh, and then I will speak about its environment, because basically when I speak of animals, I, I identify them by the diet, I identify, I identify them by the subfamily and the subspecies and the species they relate to, and then the environment, and then the social structure, and all down to the deeper details. So basically, if we look at the jaws of the spotted hyena what we see is a remarkable set of jaws and teeth that is exactly you know designed for the kill designed for the crushing designed for the 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 annihilation designed for the killing designed for the takedown of its prey now, if we look closer, what we see in the jaws is basically a set of two canines, identical to that of a lion or a tiger. But they are really sl small in size, less than that of a lion, um, and less than that of a tiger, very much less. But the reality of it, and this is very touching on the point that, you know, explains why too many people basically uh, call the hyena a bloodthirsty animal and some of them basically sees it as just an animal that is put on the land to be a pain in the ass according to them for the other species of animals now i want to basically 
just clarify one point here and my points always is are to realize to give you a point a scientific point as a wildlife enthusiast in a way to give you a rationale in a way to give you the reasoning in a way to give you the reality in a way to give you the reasons behind the behaviors of the animals because if you look at animals they have a lot of uncounted uh, types of behaviors but they all could be explained in a way or another uh, of course through science and through scientists wildlife scientists and experts alike so basically if you look at people calling this spotted hyena a bloodthirsty calling the wild dogs a bloodthirsty animals like the wild dogs the african painted dog in africa and the indian wild dog in the indian subcontinent and in asia in asia what you realize is that this came out of ignorance why because the reality of it is that uh, the spotted hyena or the wild dog has no long canine teeth like a lion or like a tiger well just to give you an idea why uh the the spotted hyena would go right away and cut through the you know the cavity of the animal would just go straight murder the animal without a bite to the neck without a killing bite and eat it alive the same way a wild dog would do is because of the fact that lions do have do do own a long canines that are basically designed with a nerve endings that connects to the brain centers that gives a exactly uh, that pinpoints exactly and sends the data of the 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 the, w the place the part where the bite is applied to how much pressure is there how much uh, bite is needed where it's exactly pointed in uh, is it uh, are like are there they lions and tigers know exactly when they are their canine teeth is sinking into a, a blood veins or a throat they know exactly where so that's why they are basically uh, you know delivering the what we would say, we, we, we would the, what we would say or what many calls the felines killing bite and that's if we look back into the evolution of the felines we can explain that but if we look back into the evolution of the hyenas the spotted hyenas or the wild dogs we can also predict why these animals are hunting in a way that is totally different from all other blind mammals in a way uh, similar to the dinosaurs if i may say because they don't own these long canines and they are not un not able to sink deep into the exact locations a lion or a tiger would go for the trachea the the throat the blood vessels of the neck the main arteries of the neck and all of that so they would go directly into the stomach content they would go directly into the anal you know part of the animal and they will cut straight through uh you know straight through the rib cage straight through the cavity of the stomach and slice the animal to its death another thing i want to clarify here about the spotted hyena is that in this way it's not really horrible like people say because in nature there is a shock mechanism and this is proven by the scientists and wildlife scientists and experts there is a shock mechanism that intervenes once a, an organism is killed by this way let's say a big organism a big animal for example a wildebeest like a wildebeest or like a water buffalo or like any other you know mammal killed by the hyenas in this way so there is a shock mechanism that intervenes and kills the animal so in a way the animal wouldn't experience that much uh, trauma and you know pain as some people would explain would basically state but the reality of it is that this shock mechanism intervenes as the jaws of these animals slice through the animal and through blood shock and trauma the animal basically dies all of a sudden so although it might takes up to 15 minutes 10 minutes 12 minutes or 13 minutes in some cases it's still the reality that 
evolution that nature has its own way to sort things out and this is a long lasting a time since time immemorial the relationship between the carnivores the predators and their prey has been uh, you know basically played out in a way that fits the food chain that fits the rules of, of each of these individuals of each of, uh, sorry of each of these animals within the uh, ecological niche in which they are living in so that's that's another point that i really wanted to clarify and when i clarify points here i'm not i, I come in a neutral way to give you the scientific point and not really biased to any uh, point or any you know you know ideas I, i'm basically just explaining here to get, to enlighten you about wildlife and to give you more knowledge of it and that's the part of the, the the purpose of my basically all of my documentaries and to cons to help you know build this sense of uh, care and enthusiasm for the conservation of the nature and the exotic wild animals so basically if we look deeper into the jaws of the hyena uh, we realize that they have a set of four canines and they have the carnations they have the the uh, if I remember the carnations and they have the the other teeth that are set there the molars yeah the premolars and also another set of, of uh, specialized teeth uh, basically if we look to the uh, area where they're uh, where the carnations, the premolars, and the molars are uh, uh, basically sit within the jaws, what you realize is an impressive jaw within the disposal and the capability of the spotted hyena. And just to give you an idea about this animal, its jaw has the most powerful uh, look, grip, and the most powerful, powerful bite of all the land mammals course after the crocodile the crocodile has the most powerful bite the most powerful jaws of all the animals in the animal kingdom and the fact if we consider the fact that the crocodile itself the crocodile itself is uh, a descendant of the dinosaurs then i think it won't be strange but in the case of the spotted hyena it's really impressive why because this animal basically uh, if we trace it back through its evolution according to scientists according to wildlife scientists it and evolution scientists uh, and experts it basically stemmed and came originated from the uh, the, the well from its own but basically it's the closest species to the hyena are the cats and the uh the big cats of course and the other animals i don't remember the name of that species but anyways i'm going to refer to this point later in the video so these are to give you an idea this th there is a similarity if you look between the felines and the hyena day and that similarity stems from the fact that they share an evolutionary line long 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 ago but they are different species from different uh, positions and different rules within the ecological niche and different, uh, you know, attitudes and totally different uh, identities. Basically, the Joes exert an amount of, if I remember correctly, yes, three tons per square inch which is a remarkable and unmatched uh, uh, biting force of all the land mammals so in if we bring all of the land even the lions who have one of the most impressive and most powerful jaws of all the land mammals and the jaguars because the jaguar has the most powerful bite between the big cats and the felines even these are not compared to the bite of the crushing bite of the uh, spotted hyena so basically the the area in which the the carnage uh, in which the molars and the premolars are set has a very powerful amount of exertion when it when the the look of the jaw locks on a an animal or on whatever that it can basically crack down the bone 
And when we say bone, we mean a real bone. For example, let's consider the following scenario. Will the beast fill into the jaws of the hyenas? What you see is not exactly what you would see or experience when you're close enough. Because if you're close enough within the vicinity of this uh, situation, this, this hunting behavior of the spotted hyena, you would realize that they are crushing the bones of this alive, still alive animal and slicing through the skin and the bone and the meat and the flesh. So this is a very, very, very adaptive and very powerful animal, very smart animal that has been always portrayed as the villain, portrayed as the devil. And that's really not up to its legacy as a, as a wild animal, as a, a mammal, as a, you know, territorial carnivore. So, looking at the spotted hyena's ability to hunt, what we see is an impressive is an impressive physique. Why? Because if we look at the body of the, the, the spotted hyena, what we can realize is that its its heart has an ability, an, an unmatched ability to basically pump blood into the veins. Of course there are uh, other animals that basically have that basically has more powerful hearts, obviously, but the the, the very impressive thing about this animal is that its its heart can pump blood into the body while it's running and recorded, uh, you know, uh, distances, long distances run by the spotted hyena. Uh, spotted hyenas are said to be 8 kilometers, 7 kilometers, 6 kilometers, which is uh, 4 miles, which uh, in, in a way if you look at the spotted hyena, it has an impressive amount of uh, energy at its expansion. It expends that energy in a very, very, uh, uh, if we say, uh, conserving way. Why? Because if you look at the way in which the legs of the spotted hyena are designed, then what you see is, you know, uh, the, the four limbs are basically longer than the uh, back limbs which means that the, basically the four legs are longer than the back legs and in a way if a if a wild spotted hyena runs either it's it's running in a in a territorial conflict with another clan either it is running after a prey in in a hunting you know uh, let's say a hunting ex, uh, expedition it basically conserves energy and expends energy at the same time because what this is what we call the hyena running loop so if you look at the hyena it's running in a loop in a very you know uh, systematic way that is very noticeable uh, if you see the 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 hump that is above the four limbs and how it moves while the animal is moving, while how the front legs are, you know, pushing and the back legs are as well, then you realize that, you know, this coupled with the ability of that heart to pump blood into the veins and therefore to operate and to energize the limbs and the body parts. And that heart is really an impressive engine, if I may say here because its ability to sustain the body for an amount of, of 15 minutes for an for four miles six kilometers around six kilometers or eight kilometers it's really a killing machine it's really a very 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 conserving yet capable animal and to give you an idea just this run would give the hyena the upper hand in most of its chases because the hyena specializes in chases unlike the lion which is the which is an ambush predator and the hyena basically runs down its prey until it's basically you know until it basically collapses from the you know the, the sheer exhaustion and the sheer you know tiredness and then it basically eats it alive according to some people but the reality of it is that it's it's uh, is that that is its you know hunting habit which it you know grew with the time 
to get accustomed with so this is the way you know a hyena would run and it's very incredible it's very you know the the let's speak of the uh, you know social structure of the hyena to give you an idea about its smartness because most of the animals that are smart basically have has a very unique and complicated social structures a very complicated way of social you know uh, relation within their species within their you know environment within their you know own you know selves so basically this animal is powered by a power plant that can pump blood into the veins in a way that keeps it moving for a long distances the stamina is unrivaled the stamina of the spotted hyena is second to none literally and it can sustain a high speed on a long distances or a moderate spe speed on, on long distances and it's considered as a long runner territorial carnivore another point here that i really wanted to point out is you know the way a spotted hyena would gather and the ability of them to vocalize and that is also consider, considered as a part of and as a you know you know a way of their hunting habit uh, which is really remarkable the way these vocalizations each sit each each you know vocalization is different from the, the other each vocalization has within its own you know uh, information conveyed in a way that is different from the other the, the body language the chemical uh, language if you look at the spotted hyena what we realize is that this animal it has three if i may say uh three languages the first is the vocalizations the hyena is well known for its howl uh which is not exactly a howl but it's whoop it's basically the whooping of the hyena and it's well known for its laugh the laughs of the hyena they are very well known for that and uh, i wouldn't call it a howl it's not a howl in fact it's the whoop the whoop which is a, a sort of a low you know low frequency uh or high frequency it depends on the situation uh, because it starts with uh, you know high frequency then low frequency so they are together they are within this vocalization which if i may you know try to imitate that this is the like what it sounds like uh, you know the hyena whoop it's like so that's really the way a spotted hyena would vocalize if it's for example it's imagine the following scenario if it's it's going to gather for a hunting you know uh expedition or a hunting uh you know you know mission they would basically uh well basically uh, not moving into the social structure of this animal basically the the females sp female spotted hyenas are tougher and bigger and more muscular than the than, than the males which gives them the uh dominance within the social group uh, and they are totally the leader so if you look at animals like the spotted hyenas they, they are, their social structure is to, to, totally matriarchal in its nature matriarchal in its you know in its deepest uh, you know details because the female is the you know the defender the female is the one who marks the territory more often more speaking of you know sort of dominance uh, she is the one who initiates all the rituals the mating she is and her total collaboration is required she is the mom the nurse the leader of the pack the one who basically decides who stays and who goes within the pack even for the males who stays and who goes so if you look for example in a scenario where a female hyena is gathering she would give uh you know sort of whooping to gather the you know the the hyenas the pack together so they can basically initiate their their hunting mission successfully and basically another example of the uh, language this time the physical language of the, the body language of the spotted hyena if you look at the tail of the spotted hyena it's it's really interesting why because because of the fact that their tails like like other animals and our mammals indicates the state of the animal and for example if you see the tail 
uh, tuft up uh, that means the animal is very excited or the animal is displaying a behavior uh, trying to communicate uh, you know danger trying to indicate that is there is a danger trying to indicate that there are some threats in the area for the other hyenas as well and if you look at the tail also it's also you know a synonym uh, i wouldn't say a synonym it's it's also the tail language or the body language is is uh often you know used when the vocalization are you know sound sounded out so that's that's another indication that the spirit hyena uses its body language in accordance with its uh let's say vocalization or vocal language another another very 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 interesting um language which uh is really sort of uh, animal language is the the chemical composition the chemical language which means all the sense that animal can that animals can gather together uh within their you know brain centers either through their senses or body and it's basically through the sense for example the uh scent which is a very very uh you know advanced sort of sense within the animal kingdom you realize that this spotted hyena has one of the most uh, notable sense, uh, scent senses and sniffing abilities uh, between the animals. The, 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 basically, if you look at the spotted hyena, it has it has what is called the anal pouch. Now, the anal pouch, which is uh, located under the tail, is very very unique. Um, uh, you know organ within the family spotted hyenas or also brown hyenas within the you know and for the hyena day in general but it's very developed in the spotted hyena and in the brown hyena if you look at that organ it it, it also it, it pastes a chemical component known as the anal you know pasting for the spotted hyena and what 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 a, a hyena basically would do is you know you know sliding its back on the on the grasslands and then basically pasting a chemical you know chemical substance on the grasses so that it marks its territory and it's not just for marking the territory that chemical that same very chemical substance has within it all the information required by the spotted hyena to voc to basically announce its present announce its uh, you know gender a male or female announce its diet what what is it you know well fed what sort of nutrition does it has and basically other more informations for its own you know individuals its own pack and for other rival packs or other packs as well for as mean of communication as mean of you know you know let's say socialization and uh, knowing each other or you know knowing uh, marking the territory and this is proven again once again by the scientists and the biologists and the wildlife experts that Within that substance, there is a whole entire, uh, you know, language there that to the to the hyena through scent alone, the brain can detect and get the necessary data to identify another individual, its territory, its diet, its, you know, physical uh, status, its physical, you know situation and all of that so that's that's very remarkable for this animal i just want to refer to one point you know i was uh basically going through here which is the physical capabilities of the spotted hyena just note that i have given an example of the hyena in maasai mara hunting the topi the antelopes and its ability to basically uh, you know uh, basically stalk these animals within the grasslands uh, at midday because these antelopes would basically try to have 
small naps like brief naps trying to sleep and basically what the, the spotted hyena does is exploiting their you know state of uh, sleepiness and try to make them food which is what is this case is so if you look at that if if suppose a successful attempt against it, it, an antelope is made the spotted hyena would stalk until a distance that it makes sure that it can't run into the animal and locks its jaws on its hind quarters or in on into its planks uh, and as you know it's it's the you know the behavior the hunting behavior of the spotted hyena to slice open the flanks of animals and it will lock its jaws into these flanks and no matter what that animal does it will not get off that hole because we said it's three inches per square inch which is a very remarkable um, locking capabilities of this jaw the amount of ex the, the exertion of power within that jaw is truly unimaginable so if if we look at this situation you can realize that some of these antelopes would basically lose some of their skin yes that's 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 recorded i mean people have no idea like let's let's bring like an idea to make this closer for you one of the people uh, some of the nami people the sam people those people who are very known for their you know uh wildlife with the animals they are they are their traditional way of life some of them lost limbs to the spotted hyena one of them i think was a chief of a, of a tribe and was very known and basically i think they hunted an animal like a hymns book hymns book and basically that animal was sliced down and they were you know slight slaughtering it and the spotted hyena all of a sudden came but they got in a, into a conflict with it and it basically grabbed one of them with its jaws and it broke sliced break broke the whole of its of his limb it basically sliced it through the bone through the skin and the flesh and it cut it right it it, it literally cut it half to half so these animals are very very dangerous sometimes they are they can be very aggressive they are very excellent at that because that's the way they are and that's how they are designed by nature these are their tools and this is their behavior we should respect that and we should basically uh respect the spotted hyena in its in its true nature if i may say here so basically looking back looking back at the physical capabilities of this animal it has an incredible stamina as we said it has an incredible really inc incredible uh body and uh an incredible jaws incredible stomach incredible digest the digestive system and uh, by that I, I would start to speak of the social structure of the spotted hyena because it's one of the most complicated within the animal kingdom if we look at the you know the spotted hyena what we can see is a very complicated system as we said social structure unlike lions unlike other animals that are mostly dominated by males although in the case of lions are not truly dominated by males but by females who lead the pack who hunt who raise the cubs and the sub adults adolescents and basically are in a way the true leaders although the, the males are the true leaders the females this the lion population and of the lion society are also true leaders so the reality of it is that in the case of the spotted hyena the female is at the core and at the the first position from the society and the social structure of the spotted hyena in that basically the spotted hyena female as we mentioned earlier in the in this documentary it has 
the more muscular body, more physical capability, capabilities, and heavier bulk, and they are more aggressive than the males, and they are more powerful, and they are really, you know, dominant within their societies, and they are designed to be dominant. One of the most interesting things within these uh, females that is that they have what is called the mock penis, which is truly an incredible, uh, you know, unique uh, body, you know, organ to the spotted hyena. And now why I'm mentioning the mock penis is basically because if you look at the status of the female within the hyena, the, the spotted hyena society, we realize that the female is physically more capable than the male, which gives us an indication of why it's dominant. But if we look deeper, as as, as I mentioned before, it's it, the, the in the act of mating, the total cooperation of the female is, you know, required in order for the mating to be successful with, with some male. So it's all up to the female to decide you know, with which she is going to mate, although the, the, the males are in charge of this operation to basically impregnate the female. But if you look at that mock penis, long ago people used to think of, and especially wildlife scientists, used to think that the uh, spotted hyena is a very unique animal in that it has no, you know, it has, the individual has two identity, two genders within it. And that's really not true because the fact is that this mock penis is very unique in that it has an external uh, vaginal opening. It has the female genitalia, uh, you know, connected. And if you look at the position in which they mate, then you can see and you can understand why the total uh, co cooperation of the female is required. Because in in a case, let's say the male, you know tries to, you know, initiate the mating and the female is not interested, then it, then there, there is absolutely no way he can basically try to, you know, go in and, you know, just mate. There, this social structure is based upon the total consent of the female upon the act of mating, because of this mock penis, if I may say. And as is known within the animal, uh, you know, experts, and that that explains why you know that that they are dominant. Now, moving on to to the social structure of the spotted hyena, they are very very uh, unique animals because they have what is called the act of the siblicide. And if we look at the act of siblicide, it's basically when the cubs are mature enough and their coat starts to give an to, to grow into a way to, similar to that of the adults then they become more aggressive and within their they are their ranks within their you know own little drama if i may say within even the den the act of siblicide happens because if you look at the structure of the spotted hyena society then you have what is called the hierarchy in which all animals must comply with and they adhere to because no one animal is superior to the other and no one animal is lower than the other except by the initiation of what is called the uh, greeting of the hyena and if we look at this uh, very unique behavior you, you realize that the the uh, spotted hyenas once they g greet and they meet they basically sniff under the genitals and the genitals themselves and that basically you know is a sign of uh, submission in a way if the individual goes into greeting first uh, and that's and that's why it's not strange to see some really big adults you know greeting the uh, the adolescents or the young cubs, if, if these cubs are really inheriting the mother's status within the clan, within the, the pack. Well, basically the hyena's social structure is called the clan. And within clans, the territorial fights are, are known to occur. And uh, 
you know, the act of greeting happens within this social structure, the uh the 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 uh, moving back to these cubs for example they kill each other in a way to assert their uh you know dominance and their authority so the act of physical strength counts but also the social structure the 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 social status being inherited from the mother for example is well known within this social structure uh, if we look at the the territorial wars between the spotted hyenas and how these animals fight, we see what is really also unique to these animals in a way. If you look at two hyenas really fighting, either be it spotted hyena or a brown hyena, you realize that the, the hump above the four limbs is basically bitten most of the time. And that's, that's their way to try each other in a way that is not really aggressive, that is not really harmful in a way although the serious you know fighting can go on to to a way and you know in in a very vicious way that very ferocious way that leaves some individuals killed some individuals losing noses or or ears or or body parts and that's really well known within the spotted hyena you can see you can you know spot a spotted hyena without a without an ear without half of the nose, without an eye, and in, in some cases, the spotted hyena is very well known for its, its uh, aggressiveness, aggressive behavior, its, its uh, carnivoran habits, habits that's, that basically stem from its, its, the nature of it being carnivore, total carnivore, and of being, you know, extremely, extremely tough animal to handle, for example, we see animals, uh, spotted hyenas, basically attacked by lions and surviving the attacks and then moving back and walking like like nothing really happened and that's really impressive uh, or walking limping or... So the, it's, it has an incredible resilience, an incredible stamina, an incredible, really incredible defense mechanism within its body and, and resistance durability when it runs for eight kilometers or higher and and the, the all of these gives us an indication okay when an animal has a social structure that is very complicated at its heart then that is quiet enough to tell us that this animal evolved in a social environment that dictates and that basically gives it traits that makes it smart habits that are you know extremely needed in adaptability or in the in the art of survival within the animal kingdom within the 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 you know the grasslands within the jungles one important and very 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 you know uh, symbolic things of about this bodied hyena is the fact that it is you know a total carnivore and when we say that we 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 mean that it it is unlike its cousins the brown hyenas or the striped hyenas who would although being a, a carnivores and scavengers uh, would go for some plant matter uh, for some fruits at times this spotted hyena has no such habits and also the fact that this animal is a predator at heart a killer i mean it, it brings down its prey by itself and it's capable you know, if we look back at the documentaries that were made in Africa at the 1980s and the 1990s, early 1990s, uh, only at the, the early 90s then that that we see the spotted hyena being depicted and portrayed in a way that is really up to its level. It used to be this, you know, image that the spotted hyena is really a carnivore. Uh, scavenger and not necessarily a predator it, it goes after what the lion hunts but the fact is really sometimes it, well you know the fact is that 50% of the lion's diet is from other is from scavenging while the, the hyena is more than 50% of its diet is you know by its own labor hard labor in hunting in in bringing down its prey within its you know physical capabilities within its group within its clan and you know these films used to look at the and this was of course before the invention of the light camera 
uh, uh, sorry, not the light camera, the, the night camera, yes, mm -hmm. the, the, the star sensitive camera, the night camera, the IR camera, the, since the, you know, the, uh, the heat sensitive camera, the one that use that, that is used for military as well as for wildlife and night photography and night vision, night vision camera, if I may say. Before that, wildlife filmmakers used to basically observe uh, spotted hyenas at the morning and they see them, you know, gathering around a lion kill. Well, not necessarily a lion kill, but it, it was, if we look back into the night, the, the hyenas brought down that kill, but nobody recorded that. And then, and then basically the lions came and took, you know, the, the rule of the scavengers and took the uh, prey away from the spotted hyenas. And nobody looked at that, but now it's all revealed that this animal is very, 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 very carnivor carnivorous and is very, uh, you know, symbolic of the carnivores as well as of the scavengers. Because we said that uh, it goes into carcasses with a level and a degree of a stench that is really not in the, you know, the reach of most of the territorial terrestrial carnivores or scavengers so if we look for example i just want to give some examples of some you know very interesting films for me one of them is i don't remember the name of the film but the guy who made it is to me is a very adventurous and very interesting guy and very uh, you know amazing guy in the way he makes his documentaries uh, he went into harar i think that that is a bbc documentary he went into the city of harar in in Ethiopia and in within this city there is a habit of feeding these spotted hyenas uh, meat scraps uh, and meat in general and he went there and and he was giving them meat and getting literally midst them in a way that he was literally I, I remember I, I'm just quoting him he said I just feel like I'm in the midst of spotted hyenas and they can just grab me at any moment that is very exciting and he he basically mentioned that it's very very unique very special feeling and he went actually he went deeper from that to get to the the den of the spotted hyenas and he trapped a you know trap camera and he recorded the clan he recorded the young you know you know uh cops and all of that but what is really unique about this guy is the way that he went, the way he was courageous enough, the way that he basically did this in order to the, to give the people, you know, an idea about this animal. I really appreciate that. One other, you know, uh, documentary about, I mentioned earlier was the Bone Crushing uh, Crusher Queen, Bone Crushing, sorry, Bone Crushing Queen by National Geographic, which was a very amazing documentary, one of the most circulated recently from 2013, 2014 and above. Um, so all of these are really, you know, giving me hope that the old image of this animal as villain, as the beast, bloodthirsty beast, is really disappearing for its true image, which would help in the cons conservation of this animal and in raising awareness and enlightening people about its its role in the ecosystem, in the African ecosystem, as well as in the Asian ecosystem, either as a spotted hyena, crocuta crocuta, or as a brown hyena, or as a, uh, you know, striped hyena. All of these are really magnificent animals that really deserves our attention, that really deserves our, you know, conservation. And with that, I really would like to conclude this video, and uh, I hope to see you soon with the part two of this spotted hyena. And with that, thank you very much.